So for any person that I'm meeting for their first visit, usually that's at the time of diagnosis, I talk about doing some prognostic testing. And I tell people I'm doing this because it tells me what to expect. It doesn't tell me what to do. But at that point, I do IGHV mutational testing. I do some form of karyotype analysis. So at our center, we use FISH, and then we use SNP array, which gives us a, basically a karyotype look. Um, some centers use karyotype in a stimulated um, type setting in the peripheral blood. And then we also do molecular testing. So we look for TP53 aberrations. And at our center, we have a panel that looks for other mutations as well. And that testing really gives us a sense of what to expect. Doesn't tell us what to do, but it does tell us some prognostic information that can be helpful for counseling patients. So that's what I do at the time of diagnosis. When patients are going to the point that they need to be treated, I also repeat the testing. So I wanna make sure, have they picked up some new genetic abnormalities? Um, that includes repeating the cytogenetic testing and the molecular testing. You, once you test IGHV mutational status, you don't have to test again because that's not gonna change through the disease course. So I really use it at diagnosis and then right before I'm starting a line of therapy. If a patient is progressing, that's another time that I perform some of this testing. So I look for whether there are resistance mutations. Um, we have availability of that testing, so it's relatively easy to do. Um, but at the time of progression, you know that there probably has been some genetic aberration that's led to that um, progression event. So it's good to get a sense of what that genetic change has been. Absolutely. I have a very similar approach to you, Dr. Roker, um, in terms of the testing when I meet a patient, um, doing the IGHV testing, um, the P53 testing, looking for both the deletion of 17P by FISH as well as a TP53 mutation by next generation sequencing or another DNA sequencing method. I think one major uh, takeaway point, though, that I would um, also emphasize and add on is that this testing doesn't make that determination, does the patient need treatment or not? Um, that really is the signs and symptoms that the CLL or SLL has causing um, uh, adenopathy that's progressive, progressive cytopenia, splenomegaly, constitutional symptoms such as weight loss, drenching night sweats, um, fatigue or fevers without another etiology. So those are still the, the determination to start treatment, but this prognostic testing can really provide a lot of information um, you know, prior to starting the initial therapy and then at each line of therapy. And we can use that prognostic information to counsel people up front. And then when we're selecting therapies, we also use some of that data to help us understand what to expect from our line of therapy. So does this person have high risk disease, a P53 aberration, where we expect that the line of therapy might not um, have the same progression-free survival as someone without that aberration. So it does help us kind of anticipate what to expect. Mm -hmm.